was like a year ago. I remember this because uh, I had a chance, my first time in my life to watch F1. F1 Singapore was the, the turning point. Well, if you look at the history of CRZ when we started, we just took a chance of going to Singapore. We knew we had a brand, we knew we had a product, we knew we had a very effective offering. But for us to test it, we considered Singapore as a, the uh, opening window. Singaporeans are well known for their uh, exquisite taste. They, they pay for quality, they, they're willing to invest a lot of money as long as they get what they want. Our first year was kind of, you can say, promising, but no real tangible metric to see if we were going to be successful. But one of the things that I always believed in sports, and as an athlete myself for 30 years, there's really no shortcut. And um, when that's your mantra, you don't believe in the instant noodle mentality. You just push through, do it. We started to engage with people, we started to share our ideas free, at no cost. And we just started to listen. Listen if uh, this makes sense for people, listen if this would help uh, bring a solution to a problem. Because remember, we're not selling any product, we're not selling um, any, any item. It's really more about transitioning from the, uh, what you call, transaction business and starting to offer the transformation business. And I always think that once you start veering away from the transaction business focus to the transformation focus and focusing on the, the person, we always believe that it will definitely have a foothold. True enough, this would be our fifth visit. <clears throat> and amazingly, what we found out is that there is a market for CRZ here in, the, in Singapore. We met uh, some amazing people. We were very surprised that majority, almost, what, 90% of our clientele right now are mostly local Singaporeans. And these guys are not just going for it. They, they research, they study. We found out that some of the people that we've uh, engaged with, they have been watching CRZ for almost two years before they finally signed up. And as soon as that breaking point came in, it just went popular. It became relevant. They started talking about it in the coffee shop. They started talking about it on uh, group rides. And next thing we know, we started to have a lot of inquiries. And these are the same people who have been in the industry for the longest time, who've had the best bikes in the world, who have, you can li literally say all the superlatives about the cycling industry. And yet, they now consider CRZ, the CRZ approach, the CRZ methodology, the what we call the biomechanics, as something that is very, very different. And, and, and why is it different? It's not very often you see a story where you turn someone, regardless of your background, regardless of your fitness level, regardless of your bike, give us 90 minutes, you will never recognize yourself. Even if you've been riding for 10 years, five years, three years, when we say our KPI and deliverables is the moment that you step in a biomechanic tuning session, and as soon as you come out, I can guarantee you, you can be a decent climber, a decent cyclist. You will enjoy cycling that like you've never enjoyed it before. So it's not really all about racing. It's not all about who's the fastest. It's not always about breaking the next Strava record. So hopefully this, this message goes across uh, to your community. We always welcome everyone to drop by, join our free learning sessions. We offer community riding because we always believe that without a community, what's the point? If you don't get to enjoy and share your stories with other people. So please let us know if you want to join our rides. Everyone's welcome. We can have a cup of coffee, ask anything you want, and uh, let's grow old together. Your CRZ experience.
it's very, it was life changing. Yeah. I always thought I was a good cyclist. Uh, more efficient today. The last time I think I didn't move uh, forward a lot, so I could not generate a top. So this time now I captured it and yeah. generate more top. Slow is fast. Uh, what I what happened is I used to conquer slope and all that. I, my my thinking was to clear the slope as fast as possible. So I use high cadence and I use a lot of uh, talk. But by the time I reach the top of the climb, I'm actually burned out and I don't have energy to go forward. Mm -hmm. But by doing uh, low cadence and really uh, slow cycling up, at the end of it, like for example today, I still can attack the climb at about. Mm -hmm. 12 to uh, 14 percent yeah and all the way to the top and uh, down more favor so this is my set, main thing that I fine tune fine tune job, posture and then some of the muscle uh, all the while been cycling wasn't used yeah i wasn't thinking of doing uh, 10 times uh, <laughs> and uh, the fact that i could do 10 times quite comfortably i think it uh, says a lot about so, the technique uh, it was mainly the uh, biomechanics because i think uh, Bike fit, uh, most people do that, but uh, the part about biomechanics is something that uh, not many people do. So I was intrigued. Okay, body positioning is getting more natural now. I don't have to think about it so much. The knee scene is natural, I don't think about it. And heart rate a lot lower compared to previous one.